this presentation, I'm going to be talking about how to make eye clickers work for you. Uh, this session will highlight tips for a successful eye clicker use, and it is based on the University of Colorado's Douglas, uh, Dr. Douglas Duncan's research as part of the Carl Wyman Science Education Initiative, which was a five-year, $5 million project to improve how science is taught to undergraduates. So the question is, would you use an eye clicker to hammer in a nail? Of course you would not. Like any technological device, there's a right way and a wrong way to use eye clickers. Technology in the classroom is a tool that enhances instruction, so it should be used properly and periodically. New technology quickly loses its appeal if it's overused. Technology for technology's sake is a mistake in today's educational world. And there is a difference between eye clicker technology and eye clicker pedagogy. Successful eye clicker implementation takes practice just like anything else. Your lesson might fail, but failure is necessary to attain results because it allows you to see what works with your particular group of students or what becomes, as this generation calls it, an epic fail. Your students will not achieve victory magically by the clicker itself. Their triumph or failure relies on your implementation. First, you have to get used to using your eye clicker before you use it with students. You have to actually practice. We all know as teachers how sometimes how irritated we get when students are not prepared to present a project. We can tell they didn't practice. It's important that we are comfortable with the equipment and knowledgeable enough to use it for its intended purpose. If it's your first time, again, you can go slow the first time. Create a simple presentation, one or two, maybe even three slides. You don't have to compete with the teacher next door to you who has all the bells and whistles on their presentation. It isn't necessary. You want to make sure that you use the eye clickers regularly. That doesn't mean every day for every lesson, for every single activity. You want it to be something that the students look forward to, not something that they expect. Again, if you make mistakes when you make your presentations, if you do a presentation that does not succeed, that is okay. You will see what works with your group of students and you will be able to create uh, a more meaningful and more successful presentation in the future. You want to make sure, finally, that you facilitate a discussion about cheating. Whether you're using the eye clicker in a higher education setting and uh, you're pretending to take a test for someone or giving an answer to a friend, you want to set up scenarios with students where they create and maybe act out short skits and then talk about whether or not each skit represents an example of cheating. And you also want to determine, as a class, clear consequences for such behavior. Now, here are some uh, practices that will most assuredly lead to failure. First of all, you do not want to just use iClicker as a device to take attendance. It is much more than that. If you are doing that, then you're wasting its potential, and you might as well use it to hammer nails. Second, you want to use the information gra gathered through iGrader as a guide to assisting students who are having difficulty in certain areas. Don't use it for grading because it is meant to provide a picture of your students' progress and growth so that you can help them learn better. Third, you want to use it to test factual recall. You would not use the iClicker uh, with math students to simplify absolute value expressions or to find an x-intercept on a graph. You want to make sure you use true or false or multiple choice, question, create multiple choice questions to review information with students. Lastly, iClickers put students, not teachers, at the center of the learning process. Talk with your colleagues about what does and doesn't work in their class and yours. Share resources, activities, and presentations, and new discoveries about your device in order to ensure the achievement of positive experiences and results and make the clickers work for you. Now that your school has ordered and received and registered your clickers, what do you do with them? You want to uh, figure out a way to store them. I've had many teachers ask me, should I let the students hold on to them? Should the teacher hold on to them? Should we keep them with the IT department? Again, that's going to be up to you based on your class dynamic. You can be creative. You can use pouches. Uh, you can have the students create their own, have it connected to their desk. 
I've seen classrooms where teachers have had students bring in paper towel rolls and then they connect them all into sort of a pyramid shape and each paper towel roll is numbered sort of like a mailbox, student mailbox and students keep them in there. Or if you have cubbies in your classroom, you can use those to store the devices. Here are some online, online choices. You can use calculator caddies. These are often used in classrooms to store calculators for math, but you can very easily adapt them, have them numbered for each student, and you can store your eye clickers within the calculator caddy so that the students can then simply go before an activity and gather their eye clicker. So when it comes to decorating eye clickers, it may not matter to you, but it will matter to your students as they try to differentiate themselves from their peers. So some decorating, um, choices we have are clicker sticker, which is a sticker that will go over the clicker. It could be solid colors, have designs. You have uh, Mod My, which is a service where they will take your entire clicker and they can change the casing color, the button color, and even the LED color. And then finally you have clicker skins, which is a silicon skin that goes over the clicker and helps protect the iClicker itself.